Hi everyone, we're going to get started in just a few minutes right at 7 o'clock. Hi everyone, we're going to get started in just a minute, right at 7 o'clock. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're super excited. My name is Charlotte Tross and I am the Director of Education with New Chapter. And I'd just like to thank Healthy Planet for hosting us and our super exciting webinar tonight, which is all about the immune system and you and building your best defense. So I'm really excited to talk about this topic today because I think it's very timely. I think there are a lot of people who have a lot of questions about how their immune system works and what they can be doing, especially at this time um, that we're all going through together. So the first thing I absolutely have to note um, as we go through this together is that um, first of all, first and foremost, this presentation is for educational purposes only. And you know, the purpose of this presentation is really to educate on the immune system, how it works, how nutritional supplements work, and to show why this is a really important system that we want to support right now. There is no current research that shows any herbal or nutritional supplement would be effective against COVID-19, and we don't want to imply that our products would be effective at defending against or healing from COVID-19. Um, this is a novel virus that unfortunately we don't know a lot about at this time. So unfortunately, I just, you know, wanted to really preface that because while we are all looking at immune health right now, I think that there is an elephant in the room when it comes to COVID-19. And I always want to be 100% honest with you and really share my feelings and thoughts on this. What I will say in regard to it is that if you are a basketball player and you are training for your basketball season, you are going to do everything that you can to play your best season, right? And I think that's what it means when we are trying to support our immune health right now. We don't know if we're going to come against the biggest, baddest team out there. We don't know if we're going to make it to the state finals. What we do know is, is that we're going to play, right? And because we're going to play, we want to put our best foot forward. And that's what supporting your immune system is all about right now. So that's what we're going to do today is learn how to put our best foot forward when we're talking about our immune system. So what is the immune system? So first of all, there's, there's a lot of complex definitions that kind of go on. And I really want to simplify this for you because I think that a lot of people um, overcomplicate things. And so I, I want to make it an easy thing that everyone can kind of relate to and, uh, and really understand. So they're of course going to make it more complex by calling it a complex network of cells, tissues, and organs and substances that help the body to fight infection and disease. So this is your first line of defense. This is how your body um, works in order to um, have a degree of resistance when you come into contact with a pathogen. And that's a word you're going to hear a lot, pathogen, right? So what's a pathogen? Pathogen is bacteria, virus, other microorganisms that can cause disease. And your immune system is going to protect you from these pathogens. So the cool part is, is that it's, it's actually a really simplistic method mechanism that your body naturally does, right? 
but at the same time, um, it is complex because it touches so many systems within your body. And because it touches so many systems, um, I really want to explain the terminology behind it because as we go into how the supplements work, I'll say, okay, this addresses this particular part, and you'll be like, ah, I get it. I know how that relates. So just so you know, we're going to go through this together. We're in it together. It's not as boring as science class, I promise you. And, uh, and we're going to figure this immune mystery out together. All right. So when we look at the immune system, we have to remember it does so much more than just fighting against these pathogens and bacteria because really it's about a system of recovery, okay? I want you to think about all the things that you come up against in a day, whether it be pollution or stress or even normal things like exercise, right? Which exercise is super healthy for you. But at the same time, all of these things can trigger your immune system, right? And they can trigger an immune response. So as we're triggering this immune response, there are certain stages that your body is going to go through. So the first stage is pretty easy. It's like hemostasis. And, that, and basically, we're just talking about blood clotting at that level, like super easy, just, you know, when you cut yourself and your body has to respond to that, that's the first stage, right? Inflammation, when it gets red and puffy, right, again, just a natural part of healing your immune system is sending its you know, triggers down to that area to address the problem. Proliferation is when you start to have that recovery happen. And the remodeling phase is what happens when you're actually rebuilding the area, which is fantastic. But exercise also requires healing, okay? And, and again, people are always like, okay, Charlotte, exercise is supposed to be super healthy, but how does it trigger my immune system? When you exercise, technically, you're doing damage to your body. So think about when you're lifting weights, right? When you're lifting weights, you're actually tearing your muscles. And when you tear your muscles, your immune system goes, oh, there's a problem there. I need to send something to help start the recovery process to actually start happening, right? So there's been this huge myth for a really long time that when you exercise, you're actually exhausting your immune system. So a lot of times people will say, don't start these strenuous exercise programs when you're trying to get healthy, if, if you're worried about taxing your immune system. And actually, that's not true. So let me talk about what current research is saying. What current research is saying is that first of all, when you exercise, you're actually helping your body build your immune system more. And unfortunately, what was happening is, is when they were looking for signs of your immune system being functioning, they weren't finding them after an hour or two of exercise. So they thought that your immune system was bailing on you. But what was really happening is your immune system was sending these, you know, messengers to other parts of your body, especially your lungs, where it's needed. So basically, what's ended up happening is, is that your immune system is a higher functioner than we even knew about before. That research came out in 2018. So exercise is super great for your body. Yes, it triggers your immune system. It can also make you stronger. So the major parts of your immune system are, you know, your white blood cells, antibodies, the complement system, the lymphatic system, your spleen, bone marrow, thymus, and other defenses that you may not realize that you have every day, like your skin, right? I mean, your skin protects you from just about everything. If you actually didn't have skin, what would end up happening is, is you'd actually get really sick very, very quickly, and you wouldn't be able to survive even one day without your skin, without risking a lot of infection, okay? So white blood cells um, are made in your bone marrow and are part of your lymphatic system. And they move through your blood and tissue throughout your body and they look for these foreign invaders like pathogens, microbes, things like that. And when they find them, they launch an immune attack. So your white blood cells include your lymphocytes and many other types of immune cells overall. And then you have your antibodies, right? Antibodies actually help the body to produce, and uh, sorry, help your body to fight the microbes or the toxins that you're going to encounter because those microbes can actually make little toxins in your body and when they start to make lots of toxins it can actually take over. Your complement system is made up of proteins and that helps to you know complement the work that's done by the antibodies that we talked about earlier and your lymphatic system is a network of these tubes that go throughout your body and the main system is to manage the fluid levels in your body to help react to bacteria, to deal with cells that are dealing with abnormality, to deal with cell products that otherwise would result in a disease or a disorder. And it's made up of lymph nodes and lymph vessels and all sorts of 
parts of your lymphatic system, it goes on and on and on. So again, you're seeing this is a very complex system, right? But the cool part is, is that when it's working correctly, your body is a high functioner. It, it's able to protect you. And we want our immune system to be functioning at a top level, right? That's what we really want. We want our immune system to really be working with us. So what's working against us? Because honestly, I think there are some things that are naturally working against us that we got to consider. First and foremost, age, right? A third of the current Canadian population is age 55 and older, and that totals 10.7 million people. And when you're thinking about your immune system, I want you to think about when your immune system is at its peak, at its height, okay? And when do you think that is? Well, if you guessed anything over the age of 18, you're unfortunately incorrect because you peak right during, um, you know, your 15 to 18 year age during your puberty. And after that, your immune system actually starts to decline. So immunosenescence is known as the aging of your immune system. And people over the age of 60 to 65 actually tend to have more dysregulation when it comes to immune challenges. And that's because your body is just going to be more susceptible um, because of, of the age challenge that you're going to face. So one of the things that you should know is that there's a loss of lymphoid tissue. Remember how we're talking about lymphatic tissue? Um, there's a loss of lymphoid tissue as you age, particularly within your thymus, and that can actually harm or, or you know, stop the way that you actually protect your body against pathogens, antigens, and all of the things, the microbial, you know, invaders that you're fighting. So again, long-term, you know, we really want to be able to look at how you can support your body as you age and really make this one less hurdle to overcome. I think another hurdle that we tend to have to look at is nutrient deficiency. Can nutrient deficiency lower your overall immunity? And the answer is absolutely, yes, it can. Vitamins A, C, D, E, B2, B6, and B12, folic acid, iron, selenium, zinc, all are associated with supporting the immune system. And what happens is, is that people do not realize that they're nutrient deficient in any one of these. Because what happens is, is nutrient deficiency doesn't tend to happen overnight. It's not like, one day you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm B12 deficient today. It's not how it works. What happens is, is that your body gets used to the nutrient levels that you give it on a daily basis. And what happens is, is that sometimes that nutrient deficiency is so gradual that you don't even notice yourself actually feeling the decline until that decline becomes your new norm, okay? So one of the things that we do know is that immune function can actually be improved by restoring the deficiency that we have in these micronutrients. And that's where supplementation can come in because sometimes, and people say this to me all the time, they're like, Charlotte, I don't believe in multivitamins. And I was like, why? And they say, well, I, you know, I, I just don't think that they do anything. I don't feel anything when, you know, I take them. And I always say two things. One, I think you're taking the wrong multi. And two is that remember that multivitamins work by delivering nutrition daily. So even if you feel 1% better, right? 1% better. You're probably not going to notice that, right? You're not going to notice that 1% better the next day, but we're a society that tends to like instant results, right? Absolutely. So the problem is, is that when you expect to feel hundred percent better the next day and you only feel 1% better the next day, people tend to think it's not working or they take it maybe for a week or two weeks or three weeks. And that 1% is built upon and built upon and built upon. So let's say we just, let's just say, we're building 1% each day. So at the end of three weeks, we're at 21% where we're feeling pretty darn good. But it was so gradual. It was so easy. We didn't even really notice it. And now this has become our new norm. So how do we know that our multivitamin is working? That we just didn't always feel this way, right? Because didn't I didn't really notice a noticeable difference. And this is where I say that your brain has to be convinced that your multivitamin is working. Our brains are very powerful. They're so powerful that we are able to do a placebo effect, which means that we can make things work just by thinking that they work, right? And does that make it any less real? No, but it's not reliable, right? So how can we convince our brain that our multivitamin is actually doing something and building this nutrition that we need? Sometimes we actually have to experience a decline. So sometimes after taking one for three weeks, people stop taking it and they're like, oh, all of a sudden that you know, dip in my daily nutrition just 
you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel not quite myself like I was like a week ago. And they start taking their multivitamin and they were convinced and they realized their multivitamin was giving them the nutrition that actually helped them to fulfill the needs of their day. And maybe it wasn't this gradual big jump that they kind of expected it to be. So I think we need to set reasonable expectations on our nutrition, but also realize that without the proper nutrition, our immune system can suffer. Now, let's talk about antioxidants, okay? Antioxidants is a word people throw around all the time. And so let me talk about what an antioxidant is. If you cut an apple in half and you cut that apple in half, what's gonna happen? It's going to turn brown, right? That's oxidation in action. What antioxidants do is they try to slow oxidation from happening, okay? So they're slowing the oxidation down, and that's what antioxidants do. And how they're doing is there's free radicals that surround us all the time, whether it's pollution, whether it's inflammation, whether it's exposure to x-rays or cigarette smoke or industrial chemicals. We are surrounded by free radicals constantly, right? And those free radicals are scavengers, right? They're out there, and they're just looking for an electric. Electron. That's all they want, right? And they will steal electrons from healthy cells in order, and they will just continue on their road to destruction. But the problem is, is that they encounter an antioxidant. And the antioxidant's like, hey, I got what you need. And the next thing you know, it gives it to the free radical, and the free radical is quenched, and its road of destruction stops. So antioxidants are super powerful. And I know that we throw around the word a lot because we're like, oh, vitamin C has good antioxidants to it. But that's how antioxidants work. They are making it so the destructive chain that free radicals can cause really ends. So I see we have a couple of questions. So I'm going to pop up here into the questions really quickly. And I'm also going to take questions at the end, just so you know. Um, so does heavy computer use affect the immune system? Yes, um, it does. And not for the reason that you would think. You would think that it's, you know, heavy computer um, use is maybe straining on your eyes or straining the systems of your body. But really where I think heavy computer use comes in is a couple of things. One is heavy computer use means that you're probably working. And if you're probably working that much, guess what? You're probably stressed out. And stress has catastrophic effects on your immune system overall. So I think we can all agree that we're under high amounts of stress, especially you know, when working from home right now. Um, and you know, I think it's just a stressful time in general. You see the news or you see you know, COVID and, and your body just feels stressed constantly. And when you're under stress constantly, it's taxing your immune system because your immune system sees your stress as something that it needs to respond to. So just understand that you know, stress is, is really a dangerous thing um, and, and that we all feel this constant amount of stress that's triggering our fight or flight system. And as you trigger your fight or flight system, which is great when you need it, like let's say you're going camping and you encounter a bear, fight or flight, man, you gotta take on the bear or you gotta take off. Either way, your body systems are heightened, right? But if you've ever had to slam on your brakes in traffic, you know that your fight or flight's triggered, right? And guess what? It stays triggered because then you go to work and your boss is like sending you an email at like at 9 a.m. saying, hey, I wanna see you. And you're like, oh, well, what's going on there? And your fight or flight starts to kick up again. So if we send all day in that fight or flight response, our body literally spends days triggered. And then people wonder why, you know, we have trouble with insomnia and, in, uh, and, you know, and by the way, if you're not sleeping well, that's definitely bad for your immune system. So again, just trying to support this from all angles. It's really an all encompassing thing. So what are some other things other than antioxidants that we can look at to help support our overall immune system? And I know I've got more questions and I promise I'll get there at the end. So just, just know I'll scroll back when I can. Um, so what else can we possibly do? So one of the things that I think that we can do is talk about beta-glucans, right? So beta-glucans are amazing. So beta-glucans naturally occur in the cell wall of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, fancy name for brewer's yeast, guys. And they may hold the key to a strong immune system because when they were compared to other types of natural immune enhancers, beta-glucans actually outperformed them all. So where can we find these magical beta-glucans and how do they work? We're gonna talk about that today, so I'm super excited. But what we do know is that yeast beta-glucans increase the body's potential to defend against invading pathogens, which means it's strengthening your immune system. And we're gonna talk about how they work today. So I do work for a lovely 
lovely company. They're called New Chapter. And we happen to make a line of multivitamins. And the cool part is if you're looking for beta-glucans, if you're looking for antioxidants, and you're looking for fermentate, which is a really nutritious broth, well, you're going to find that all in New Chapter's um, fermented multivitamins. It's a multivitamin that delivers the benefits of fermentation every day, and you can experience this different for yourself. And so I'm going to take you through the difference real quick, and then um, I'm going to show you how it actually is supportive of your immune system overall. So when you're looking at our fermentation process, we're going to break this down super easy. So it's like Pac-Man, guys, okay? What happens is, is we take nutrients like food or plant carbohydrates, or let's even say vitamin C. And we have Pac-Man here. And Pac-Man, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, again, fancy name for Bruges, he's going to munch down on those nutrients, right? And now the vitamin C is no longer vitamin C. It's a part of the Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae is very cool because it's actually got the same cell structure as a human cell structure. So when you take it in, your body recognizes it and it's like, hey friend, how's it going? I'll take you. And the next thing you know, your body is able to recognize and absorb those nutrients. The cool part is, is that there's also added benefits because we actually add probiotics into the end of our fermentation process. And that actually means that there's inactive probiotics in our um, fermented multivitamins. And I know everyone's like, whoa, 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 hold up, Char, hold up. Um, you're telling me inactive probiotics, and I know that probiotics need to be alive to cause benefit. And I say, hey, you know what? Pro live probiotics are awesome. We're going to talk about that today, too. But actually, inactive probiotics do something really cool, too. They lay a foundation for your microbiome. They lay a foundation for your gut. And there's actually been studies that show that when you take in inactive probiotics, it can be inflammation balancing within the digestive tract. And we all know how important your digestive tract is to being healthy. And that's actually going to help support your overall immune system. Super cool. But it goes beyond there. Because remember how we were talking about antioxidants? Antioxidants are awesome, right? Well, here's the crazy part. When you have a typical copper or a typical iron or a typical vitamin C, they have some antioxidant content. Now for vitamin C, we know it's high because guess what? It's a known antioxidant, right? But when you ferment typical ascorbic acid vitamin C, guess what? It's antioxidant C goes up. And you actually get an oxidative substance like iron, and when you ferment it, it increases it into an antioxidant state. So you're getting more quality antioxidants all the time by taking fermented nutrients. And when you're talking about giving your body the antioxidants it needs to quell those free radicals, you can't go wrong with fermented nutrients there. But that's not all, right? That's not all, Johnny. What we also have is, of course, that, you know, inactive probiotics that we know is helping with the inflammation that our digestive system is experiencing. We have those cool nutrients that are helping supply the micronutrients that were harboring us from having a functioning immune system overall. And there's more, okay? So first of all, when you are increasing your native antioxidants, you're increasing your body's ability to make glutathione or to increase glutathione levels in the body. And glutathione is known as like the master antioxidant. And yes, new chapter multivitamins were able to increase glutathione levels within the body as well. But I know what you're saying to me. You're like, Charlotte, I gotta see it. I gotta see it to know that it's working for me, right? All right, let's make sure it's working for you because when you look at these electron microscope pictures, what you're gonna see is this. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see typical copper, or typical vitamin C, or typical iron, right? So before fermentation, they're just in their regular mineral state or nutrient state, right? What happens is, is you can actually see that the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that, that brewer's yeast, has incorporated into its cell structure, and now you're actually seeing these yeast cells. Now, hold on, I know, I know what you're thinking here. Charlotte, you use the Y word, which is yeast, right? Oh man, I hear you. Everybody's fighting the yeast beast, right? Yeah. But what I need to tell you is, is just, do you remember back in the 90s when all bacteria was bad? Do you remember when all bacteria was terrible and we were like, oh, anti-germ and, you know, rub hand sanitizer all over yourself because all bacteria is bad. And then the idea of probiotics came out, right? And people were like, probiotics, good bacteria, right? So then all of a sudden you have this concept of bad bacteria and good bacteria with probiotics. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's good yeast 
and bad yeast. Now, the bad yeast that you're probably thinking of is candida albicans, okay? And that's an invasive yeast. It can take over, super nasty. We don't like candida albicans at all. Good yeast like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Saccharomyces boulardii are immune supportive yeast that actually can help to combat candida albicans. Really cool. We're going to look at that more when we talk probiotics, but again, remember the idea good yeast, bad yeast, not all yeast is created equal, and that's something important that's going to help you with your immune system overall. Now, where else can we find these magical things that we talked about earlier called beta glucans? Okay, so the beta glucans in yeast, like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and the beta glucans that you would find in traditional Chinese mushrooms are actually very similar. They have what we call a 1 3 1 6 structure, okay? And the cool thing is, is that this is the best structure to bind with your immune system and activate it, okay? I'm gonna show you how that works in just a second. So when you're taking our fermented products, you're actually getting a natural beta glucan content within those supplements as well. So just so we're keeping track here, we're getting high antioxidant content, we're getting a fermented product that your body can recognize in a yeast delivery system so that your body is like, I recognize you, I understand you, I can take you in and use you, we love that. And then we are also getting that, you know, digestive balancing, inflammation balancing from the inactive probiotics. And now we're getting beta glucans, which is going to help our immune system really pump up the volume. So how does that happen? So cute little cartoon here. Macrophages are ordinary white blood cells that are protecting your body from bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Okay. And when macrophages attack, um, invading bacteria, um, they're, they're antimicrobial warriors. That's what they do. That's their job. So macrophages are going to play a really critical role in your immune regulation and in your immune, I'm sorry, in your immune regulation and wound healing. So what's going to happen is, is that your macrophages are actually going to bind with these beta glucans. They're just going to munch down on them, right? And what happens is when they munch down on them, they become a stimulated macrophage. And that becomes a super macrophage that's on high alert. And it's now more able to distinguish intruders and identify them as not belonging within your system and help to fight against them. Not only that, its communication systems are improved so that it's better able to communicate with your T cells and your killer cells for more support. And that makes it a more effective pathogen fighter, which means that it is supporting your immune system from the inside out. And if you're looking for immune support, from a multivitamin that has a natural beta-glucan content to it, you're going to find that with New Chapter because our beta-glucan content in our multivitamin product is naturally existing because of the fermentate that includes the Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is just an example of how much beta-glucans per milligram, sorry, in milligrams that you're going to find in some of our products. The Every Woman One Daily, you're finding almost 80 milligrams of beta-glucans. And there are products out there that sell beta-glucans just on their own. So again, it's a side benefit that you get by taking a new chapter product. Um, not only does it help replenish those micronutrients that could be dragging your immune system down, but now you're getting the added benefit of beta glucans as well. So, all right, I'm going to jump to some questions and then I'm going to come back. So, um, what if I have candida and have yeast issues? Absolutely. So again, um, remember that um, yeast fights yeast really well, and we are going to talk about our probiotic all flora a little bit later on, but it includes Saccharomyces boulardii, which is an incredibly awesome yeast fighting machine. It's incredible because yeast fights yeast really, really well. So we'll talk about Saccharomyces boulardii in a little bit. Um, so, okay, lots of questions. Sorry, guys. Um, so, okay. Uh, tons and tons of questions. Do the fermented products help increase and improve the microbiome in the gut? Yes. So again, you're laying that foundation. Um, your body likes certain foods when it's talking about microbiome health overall. And so again, when you're talking about digestive health, and we're going to talk about digestive health a little bit more when we talk about probiotics, 
but you're trying to lay a foundation for your microbiome and there's a lot of disruption going on. Like in America, I know we have 74% of people with digestive issues. I know it's lower in Canada because you guys are much better eaters than us. But, um, but what I know is, is that when you're laying a good foundation down, it actually improves your digestive parameters and, you know, fermented nutrients are able to do that. So that's great. Let's talk about ATP for a second. So how do we measure for ATP? So ATP luminescence test, I think this is a really cool test that we do. It's to test how our products work in helping your body to recover. So I want you to think about all the things that you're coming up against. Remember how we talk about pollution and all the damage that we're undergoing every single day from our, you know, um, our regular lifestyle. When you're talking about your immune health, it's all about the recovery. It's all about how bad, you know, how much you can recover after experiencing damage. So what we do is we measure ATP because this is a molecule that's found in living cells and it gives a direct measurement to how fast your body is able to regenerate and rebuild from damage. And the cool part is, is that the reports that we've done on our multivitamins show that we actually increase ATP production, which means we're going to help your body to restart on that recovery process um, more effectively, which again, great for your immune system. Some nut vital nutrients that we include in our multivitamins that you probably want to talk about. Vitamin D. The vitamin you can make, but you're probably not because, you know, if you're getting outside right now, awesome, way to go you, super proud of you. But 32% of Canadian adults have insufficient vitamin D levels. And, you know, what, what's happening is, is that when you go outside, you're able to make your own vitamin D when the sun is, you know, hitting your skin. Unfortunately, we are also having a reaction to the sun right now. Um, especially, you know, if, if you're, um, you know, prone to getting a sunburn, that can cause some inflammation. And again, that can trigger your immune response, right? So what do we do when we go out in the sun? Well, we wear sunscreen, right? But when you wear sunscreen, you actually cut vitamin D to, um, production, even if you're wearing an SPF 15, by 99%. So we really need for our body to be able to get the D that it needs. And that's where supplementation can really come in to, to help. Because if you're vitamin D deficient, you're going to have a low immune system. You might be experiencing some fatigue, depression, bone loss, hair loss, muscle pain. A lot of time people experience these things and they don't think about the fact that it could be associated with the way they're eating. Also remember that when you're stressed out, these are side effects of stress as well. So also remember that stress can deplete magnesium levels in the body, and this can also be signs of magnesium depletion. So that's why taking a multivitamin is so important. You don't really, you know, you don't need the magic bullet, right? If you just start taking vitamin D, you're hoping that it's D deficiency that's causing these symptoms, right? But if you take a multivitamin, it's like throwing 26 darts at a dartboard instead of just one, and you have more of a chance of actually hitting what you might be missing out on. So again, you know, it's essential to many systems of the body, especially for immune support. Vitamin D3 supplementation during the winter may actually reduce the incidence of influenza A, and deficiency in vitamin D is associated with increased autoimmunity um, as well as susceptibility to infection. So again, if you're trying to support your immune system, definitely want to make sure that you have D3 included in your multivitamin or in your regimen overall. And also there's side benefits to it because it supports your healthy bones and it supports teeth as well. And it supports your body's ability to take calcium in and utilize calcium. And we all could use that, especially as we get older as well. Um, the next one that we'll talk about is, is vitamin C. And I don't really think people give enough credit to vitamin C. Vitamin C is super important. And it's something that we tend to take for granted because we see that things are fortified with vitamin C all the time. But I really want to touch on the fact that when I talk about vitamin C, the first food that pops into people's head immediately is orange juice, right? But the crazy thing is that when you take your vitamin um, C with sugar, your body actually is going to fight itself in order to take in the vitamin C because the sugar and the vitamin C are actually trying to get into the same place. And sugar wins out most of the time. So that, that you know, cool, you know, orange juice that has a lot of sugar in it, guess what? You're probably not getting a lot of the vitamin C that you really need from it. And the sugar is really probably, you know, gonna mess up with your system anyway because the high amounts of sugar we know isn't good for us. 
The other part of it is, is that people think, well, can I just eat more fruits and vegetables? I'm all about it. Yes, absolutely eat more fruits and vegetables. But there's a couple of things that you should keep in mind. First of all, is that our crops are getting turned a lot faster than they were before. So our crops now are actually less nutrient dense than they were in the 1970s. So you'd actually have to eat eight oranges today to get some of the same nutrient levels that you would have in one orange in the 1970s. So again, I think that we have this, this warped idea of what you know food can do for us sometimes and supplementation can kind of help fill the gap when we're not eating at our best, right? But we still wanna feel good. And it's really more than just an antioxidant. Um, you know, there's the antioxidant power that vitamin C has, but vitamin C is a strong antioxidant that can really help support your immune system overall, but it also helps you with collagen levels. So collagen's a really hot topic button right now. People are all about collagen for helping with their skin health or with their joint health. And the truth is to utilize collagen properly or to even produce collagen because your body produces its own collagen, you have to have adequate levels of vitamin C. And please remember that vitamin C is water soluble. So it's a use of or lose it policy. It's like you try and use what you can and then you lose the rest and you got to go it again the next day. So people are sometimes like, oh, I had an orange yesterday. I should be good. But orange that you had yesterday isn't doing anything for you today. And that's why supplementation is important because as much as we all try, I think, to have the best intentions, sometimes it's not that easy to get the same nutrition levels every single day unless you, you know, you're keeping really, really great track of it. Um, and with the way things are, I think that's harder to do. So again, um, one of the things that we wanna talk about is the right dose. Your body can actually only absorb about 250 milligrams of vitamin C at a time. The rest of it is excreted because your body usually can't utilize that much at once. So one of the things that I like people to be aware of is, is that yeah, you can totally take a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, you're probably not gonna get all of it. So I always try and look for responsible dosage of at least around 200 to 250 milligrams at a time. And that means that you're you know, really gonna be getting the levels that you need. But remember, water soluble, so you gotta keep on that. And if we're talking about really cool ingredients, I would be remiss in telling you about astaxanthin. So astaxanthin appears in our new chapter, Fermented Multi 55 Plus. Why I love this is because, first of all, astaxanthin is a superfood antioxidant that supports your immune cells. It helps to balance inflammation levels. It actually showed a decrease in C-reactive protein levels after people were taking it. And it helps to support aging gracefully because of its high antioxidant status. How high is this antioxidant status? Well, it's pretty awesome. It's 6,000 times more potent of an antioxidant than vitamin C. Six thousand times, 800 times more potent than CoQ10, and 75 times more potent than alpha lipoic acid. And at New Chapter, we have a really beautiful story about our astaxanthin. It's organically sourced from an algae called Hematococcus pluvialis, I know. And when you source it, the astaxanthin from algae like that, you get a really concentrated dose of it, which is fantastic because there are um, nutrients, or sorry, there are foods that naturally contain astaxanthin in it, like salmon. It's what makes salmon pink. Um, but you'd have to eat quite a lot of salmon in order to get the same astaxanthin levels that you would get from an algae like Hematococcus pluvialis. And the cool part is it's also vegetarian. So we source ours organically and it actually originates in waters from the Himalaya mountains. So super cool. So when you're talking about building your best defense, I really hope that you consider taking a multivitamin. Taking a fermented multivitamin is going to give you a great foundation, but it's also going to be able to help in side benefit ways, like with beta-glucans and higher antioxidant C capacity, even helping with inflammation balancing within the gut. So again, super excited to present these multivitamins to you from New Chapter. And uh, we're going to talk about another favorite of mine, which is elderberry. I'm sure you guys have heard the elderberry cake craze is strong. Um, and it's really gaining immune system. Um, momentum as our immune system um, season is, is, you know, starting to ramp up as we get out of the summer. Um, so traditionally, um, elderberry has been a must-have supplement for cold and flu season. And that's because there's a lot of new, really exciting research that we're going to talk about when we talk about elderberry. So what research is really impressing our, our, our customer base right now and, and impressing us when we're talking about um, elderberry? So let's take a look at some really cool elderberry and flu research. So first of all, when we're talking about elderberry, Elderberry actually inhibits the influenza's vir viruses entry 
and replication into your human cells. So that actually, that research was just came out in 2019. So it's really interesting that it stops the flu virus from replicating and therefore your body is able to tackle the flu easier than if you didn't have elderberry in your system. It's also saying that people who get the flu recover earlier with elderberry than if they were even going to take some of the pharmaceuticals that are out there that try to reduce the illness um, length. So like Xanamir, Oseltamivir, so Tamiflu um, is approved in the US for use against the flu, but it actually only shortens the duration of flu by a day and a half where elderberry shortens it by four days earlier. So nobody likes to be sick with the flu. And again, it's how elderberry works. It's actually helping to protect your body um, from the replication of those flu virus um, and, and helping you to recover faster, which is exactly what we want when we're talking about elderberry. There are some side benefits other than just to the flu as well. When we're looking about the common cold, so remember the common cold is also caused by a virus. So while there are over 200 types of cold viruses, um, the most common one that we run across is called the rhinovirus, which is responsible for about 50% of colds. So the most common cold is, is actually costing us time away from work, and it costs us, you know, just days that we, we would have to take off. So it costs us a lot of money because guess what? You know, colds are really easily transmitted. So when we're talking about shortening the duration of your cold, Elderberry, in fact, the exact same elderberry that we use at New Chapter, it's called membrane filtered elderberry. So it, what it, that means is a fancy way of saying that we use these screens that filter out the sugar from the elderberry so that you get this really pure elderberry extract. And it's also a whole extract, it's just minus the sugars. And that's really cool because your body is it's just concentrated, but your body can utilize it. So the exact same elderberry was used in a study, and it was shown a significant reduction of cold duration and cold associated associated symptoms in air travelers. So the other thing is, is that as you know, when you're recovering from a virus, whether it be from the flu or from the, a cold, you can get a bacterial infection from, you know, suffering because, you know, your, your body is kind of um, open to, to more bacteria at that time. So a useful approach is taking something that can address both bacterial and viral when you're looking at colds. And guess what? Elderberry can do that. In fact, elderberry was found to be effective against bacteria um, as well as the flu virus. So again, um, it was able to complement those systems there. So just a heads up, and, and I just like to be completely transparent here because I, I love to be honest about the education, the research that's out there. So first of all, we know that it's effective against the flu virus. We know that it's effective against this certain type of bacteria. But I find words like antiviral and antibacterial really misleading. Because when we say something like antiviral, I think people can construe in their heads, this is good for all viruses. But we don't have the research to back that up yet. What we do have is the research that that works with this particular virus, and therefore it's effective there. But remember, there's over 10,000 different types of viruses out there. So I just kind of want to call that out so that we're being totally transparent with each other and that we're, you know, we're all on the same page of what we're talking about. So why are elderberries so effective? It's because they have anthocyanins in them. So anthocyanins are a type of flavonoid, and this is like a blue, red, violet pigment that has a really powerful antioxidant content to it. And elderberries are super rich in antioxidants overall, and that's because of the anthocyanins that are within them. And anthocyanins have their own research that shows that it's great for cardiovascular support, vision support, inflammation support, memory support, and even allergen support. So that's a lot of areas that your body can actually be supporting anthos with supported with anthocyanins, as well as so showing research against some types of viruses and some types of bacteria as well. So we use a Hauschberg elderberry, which is the top because it has 30% more anthocyanins than other types of elderberries. And it has that high flavonoid content that you need. Um, and we believe that we use one of the best elderberries out there. But recently there was a study done 
by consumer labs and they tested the anthocyanins found in elderberry supplements and new chapter actually came out on top almost 10 times higher than our leading competitor. So we were super excited to find out that we were a top pick from consumer labs on having a really high anthocyanin content, which is what you wanna have when you're picking an elderberry product. So New Chapter's Elderberry Force features our signature Eldercraft Hauschberg elderberries paired with black currant, and that's a synergistic pairing, which means that the black currant helps the elderberry to actually work better, and it also has side benefits of its own. And this is great for the relief of symptoms of colds and flus, such as cough and sore throats. But remember how we were talking about beta-glucans earlier? So you're like, Charlotte, I'm really digging the beta-glucans. I'm digging the idea of, you know, feeding my macrophages, these beta-glucans to really turn on my ability to, you know, up my immune system, right? If you're looking for more beta-glucan support, you can find it with New Chapters Mushroom products. What I love about our mushroom products is, is that we DNA verify our mushrooms to make sure that they are DNA matched to the mushrooms that are used in traditional Chinese medicine, which is the Lingzi Reishi mushroom. And as you can see, our mushrooms are super um, potent in a beta-glucan content. So mushrooms have been used traditionally um, for centuries, and, or actually for longer than that, thousands of years. And they're really rich in polysaccharides, which are carbohydrates that your body can use. They're actually called good sugars. And um, I don't want you to think of them as the same type of sugars that raise your blood sugar level and stuff, but they're, they're good sugars. And your body is able to utilize them and support different immune functions with those polysaccharides. So our immune support mushroom actually features many different types of mushrooms. Reishi, mataki, lion's mane, chaga, shiitake, turkey tail, and poria are all found in our immune support multivitamin. And they're all really rich in polysaccharides. And so one of the things that we wanted to measure was our polysaccharide content versus other mushroom products. And as you can see, our Lingzi Reishi really came out on top when we were looking at other Reishi products. And also we made sure that our Lingzi Reishi was that, again, that DNA verified. Um, because again, you know, we're not all mycologists. It's really difficult to tell one mushroom from another mushroom um, unless, you know, we have some sort of verification there. And that's why we love DNA verification. You know, you can still be classified as a reishi mushroom and only share 97% of a DNA match. And why that's a problem is, is that like humans and chimpanzees actually share a 99% DNA match. So 1% makes a huge difference, right? So you can imagine in a plant kingdom, 3% difference, that's a huge difference, which is why we want to make sure that we're DNA matched to what has been traditionally used in Chinese medicine, which is what we are, which is the beautiful Lingzi Reishi. And so you can find both um, our beta-glucan rich mushrooms in Life Shield Reishi and Life Shield Immune Support as well. And they're non-GMO project verified as well. So when we're talking about whole body health, I think it's really important that we address digestive health. 90% of all diseases can be tracked back to your gut health and the microbiome overall. And you know, when you're also thinking about mood health, 90% of the serotonin that your body makes is also produced in your gut as well. So gut health is really essential to overall body health, right? And when we look at autoimmune diseases and how they happen, you know, there's more and more research that's suggesting that they're not passed down by DNA, but they're passed down by inheriting your family's microbiome. Because who do you eat like? Your parents. Who do you drink the same water as usually for, for your areas of life? You know, your parents. So because of your environmental areas being very similar, um, you might not be inheriting this through the DNA, but rather through, you know, the things that we're eating, the things that we're drinking and the environments that we surround ourselves in. So how can we support our microbiome? Well, you know what? More than 20 million Canadians are suffering from a digestive disorder, and what's causing a lot of the microbiome disruption is we take a lot of antibiotics. When you take an antibiotic, you wipe out your microbiome, and you really do a lot of damage to the good bacteria that are existing because you have to get rid of the bad bacteria. I'm not saying anything against antibiotics. I'm not saying if you don't need an antibiotic, you shouldn't take one. Absolutely. Please listen to your doctor on that front. But also know that if you've taken an antibiotic, that you have to restore the good bacteria in your gut. And your body needs a, a, a restoral um, probiotic to do that. And so we believe that research strains really deliver on this front. So when you're looking for a probiotic, just turn it to the side. And you're going to look for one with these little initials on the side, like B Breve BRO3. Again, 
super important because that means that you're getting a clinically researched strain that is verifiable to deliver the kind of results that's associated with the research to that strain. It also means that it's DNA verified to be what it claims to be, which is super important as well. And it really gives you an assurance of quality. So we com we combine two different types of clinical strains, the LPO1 and the BRO3. And when you look at the research, you found that it improved digestion and it improved your body's ability to deal with inflammation. And it also was really shown to be effective on people who were um, experiencing IBS. The great part is, is that we didn't just stop there. We actually paired it with a beneficial yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. Remember I was talking about the yeast beast earlier? Okay, so Candida albicans is a bad yeast and Saccharomyces boulardii is a good yeast. And Saccharomyces boulardii is very good at crowding out Candida albicans. And so we're one of the first um, probiotics that really has included not only the DNA verified strains from the probiotic front, but also including Saccharomyces boulardii to help you fight any Candida overgrowth that might be occurring as well. A lot of people come to me and they're like, Charlotte, can't I just eat more yogurt? And I'm like, look, I'm a huge yogurt fan, dig it, right? The problem with yogurt is, is that when they did a test of, I think they did a test of over a hundred different types of yogurts that you would find in the store, none of them found enough viable probiotics that were going to make any kind of a difference um, to your overall microbiome. So it's a healthy food, but it may not be making the, the pack the punch that we think it's making, right? So again, that's one study and we know that, but the other part of it is, is that a lot of us like these flavored yogurts and they're delicious, don't get me wrong, they're super yummy, right? But they also have like 25 grams of sugar in them for that little cup. And that's honestly the exact same amount of sugar that you would get in a Snickers bar. And I don't know about you, but like your whole daily allowance of sugar should be about 25 grams, which means you're spending your whole daily allowance of sugar on a cup of yogurt, you could be having a Snickers bar. But again, if you're trying to fight the yeast beast, um, do me a favor, stay away from the sugar. Sugar feeds and candy to albicans. Um, but a great way to crowd that out is to uh, to have a probiotic with the Saccharomyces boulardii in it. Fantastic and more powerful than yogurt. So the final thing that I wanna to touch on today is stress, okay? Stress is, again, we just touched on this earlier, stress is really hard for your body to adjust to. And we all tend to be under large amounts of stress these days. And so what you're gonna be looking for is maybe an herbal complement to help calm the stress that you're feeling right now so that your body is not in a constant state of needing support from your immune system to deal with the constant state of stress that we all happen to be in right now. So I have two herbs that I'm absolutely in love with. My first one is holy basil, okay? Holy basil to the rescue. So holy basil is an adaptogenic herb. And what adaptogenic herbs do is they actually help your body to adapt to stress. And what I love about that is, is that it makes it easier for your body to cope with the stress and it actually relaxes the systems within the body that deal with stress so that you overall feel a relaxation effect. For me, holy basil, taking holy basil is like having a glass of wine, but without the fun. Um, and it just helps me to kind of chill out a little bit, but I don't always want to chill out like that. Let me just be honest with you. Like it's great at the end of the night when I need to wind down, but when I'm trying to like punch through some work and I still need that support, I actually turn to a different herb and my favorite herb is rhodiola. And I think rhodiola is a fantastic adaptogenic herb. And the cool part about rhodiola is, is that doctors who took rhodiola, um, who, um, who were doing overnight shifts actually performed better on cognitive tests at the end of their shift than at the beginning. So if you're going to an emergency room, you really want your doctor to be on rhodiola because they're actually performing better at the end of their shift by taking it than at the beginning. But you can just see that if you're under a high amount of stress that you still have to mentally perform, rhodiola is a great way to really support your overall system with that. So again, look for adaptogenic herbs to help support you through these stressful times that we're all dealing with together. And I think that that's going to help start you on your road to immune success. And then, you know, look at those fermented nutrients or, you know, micronutrients in general to start replenishing what your body needs to support your immune system overall. That's super important. Don't forget your digestive health. Your digestive health is super important. And, you know, with a lot of things starting in the digestive, 
you know, system, you'll definitely want to be supporting your overall digestion and a great probiotic can do that for you, but also a great fermented multi to lay that great foundation that we talked about. And then on top of that, you know, if you're looking for extra beta glucan support or mushrooms that are known for being immune supportive throughout history, um, you couldn't go wrong with a beautiful immune support blend like we make with New Chapter or really great DNA verified reishi mushroom as well. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I'm so excited to join me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on and I'm going to answer some questions with the time that we have left. And, uh, and so let's see what I can tackle here. So um, is um, multivitamin derived from food sources as effective as another type? Okay, cool. So let's talk about what a food source derived multi means. Okay. So sometimes when people make a food source multi, what they're doing is they're extracting nutrients from food, okay? Here's why that's a good thing. It's a good thing because we're like, oh, it's coming from food and this is just like eating it. But here's the deal. Your body still has to break it down. Your body still has to break down those nutrients. Let me give you an example. Folic acid and folate, right? Okay, so folic acid um, your body has to convert and it converts it into methylfolate so that your body can use it. So when you get folic acid from food, it's called folate, okay? But your body still has to break down that folate from food in order to break it down. The cool thing is, is that at New Chapter, we actually use two different methods. One is we use methylfolate straight, but we all, in some of our multivitamins, and in some of them, we use a fermented folic acid. Now remember, what happens is, is that that Saccharomyces cerevisiae breaks it down and incorporates it into its cell structure. So now your body's gonna recognize it in its new form. So your body is like, oh, hey, how's it going, friend? And we really love that. When you're talking about breaking down nutrients overall, you wanna put it into a form that your body can recognize. I want you to be really aware of, you know, sometimes people put what I would call a whole food blend into multivitamins. And I think that that's okay as long as you understand what you're getting. You know, they'll be like, oh, you're getting 20 milligrams of broccoli and red peppers and green peppers and, you know, all these foods. And you're like, I'm like getting a whole serving of, of these great foods, right? But the truth is, let's really break down what 20 milligrams mean. So one raisin, one tiny raisin is one gram, okay? Now I want you to cut that raisin into a thousand pieces, okay? And 20 milligrams is just 20 parts of that, 20 tiny, tiny parts of that. So how much nutrition are you actually getting from that? Not much. I mean, if I took a thumbnail of spinach and I was like, there's your veggies for today, you'd look at me like I was nuts, right? But the truth is, is that, you know, when it comes to vitamins, people add in this whole food blend and they think they're getting a lot more nutrition from it. Now you're still getting nutrition from the vitamins that are included, but I think they think they're getting a lot more of that nutrition from food. Now here's where herbals are completely different. So a new chapter, we include herbal complements into our multivitamins. And according to traditional Chinese medicine, what we try and do is start with the lowest effective dose before moving into higher doses, right? And with herbs, sometimes tiny doses actually make a huge difference. Traditional Chinese medicine actually focuses on the idea that formulation occurs when you are combining herbs in great combinations to help synergize them. And the cool part is, is that those herbs are, are actually able to potentiate each other. So in New Chapter, we believe in small amounts of herbs because we feel that those make a huge difference. Um, and, you know, again, just to understand like how vitamins are made and things like that, ours are fermented, so they're incorporated incorporated into the Saccharomyces, but sometimes people just add Saccharomyces cerevisiae into the multivitamin. So the vitamins are still the same, they're just mixed with a Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and that's not really the same thing. So again, um, I hope that cleared up your question about how, um, how vitamins are, are, you know, derived from food sources and how your body utilizes them. So where are the vitamin ingredients sourced from? So 
we tend to source things from where they you know come from best what's happening is is that when you take things through the fermentation process you need to take um, through certain nutrients so we may start with an ascorbic acid but because we start with an ascorbic acid what happens is is that when we ferment it it actually survives fermentation very well um, because we believe that the fermentation process adds a lot of side benefits in it that we talked about with the additional you know saccharomyces cerevisiae being a, a great source of beta glucans and things like that so we see the necessary um, components of uh, nutrients be used in the fermentation process. What I think is really important to note is that not all nutrients survive fermentation well. We've been doing this for a really long time. We actually started fermenting nutrients in 1986. And you know, it took a long time for us to find out this perfect ratio that we found um, for the amount of time that we ferment and the ingredients that we use to ferment to really give you optimum nutrition. So that's what we try and deliver at New Chapter. Um, is there such a thing as taking a multivitamin and eating food that are nutrient rich in a vitamin that you take too much of, like it's like iron? Yes, this is why life stage um, and age um, appropriate vitamins are super important. Um, one of the reasons that I like life stage um, multivitamins like we make it new chapter is because our 55 plus you'll notice our 55 plus for men actually doesn't contain any iron at all and that's because men over 55 don't need iron um in fact um women who are menstruating do need iron and so we try and provide iron in that supplement and of course we try to um include it in our perfect prenatal because um prenatal women are actually more likely to develop anemia fun fact if you were talking about getting the iron you need from food in your prenatal, you would actually have to eat 40 ounces of steak in a day to get the iron you need during pregnancy. 40 ounces, that's a lot. And I don't think I could do it. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't think it could happen. So I would need to supplement that. And I think that it's super important to note that these are nutritional supplements. New chapter does not mega dose. We don't believe in, in adding super dosages like zinc. Um, what people don't realize is that zinc is a fine balance within your body. You can get too much of a good thing and zinc is one of those things. Fat soluble vitamins are the same thing. Anytime you have a fat soluble vitamin, your body stores it for usage as opposed to water solubles like B and C, which you excrete the excess of. So the cool part is, is that we actually have come up with really great ratios for nutrients where we're not mega dosing because we want you to be able to utilize the nutrients that you need and, and not you know, mega dose with nutrients that you don't need just because it looks bigger and better on the side of a box. It's not how we work at New Chapter. We really believe in the science of, for, of formulation and like looking at things like vitamin C, you only get 250 milligrams at a time and everything that you take over that is exponentially you know, not used or wasted. So it's kind of like, why would you do it, right? So you'll find really responsible dosages in, in New Chapter vitamins as well. So um, I'm trying to find some other questions, maybe that covers some different areas. Um, what omega-3 supplement has no gelatin that you would recommend? Um, unfortunately, we make one in a new chapter, it's called Omega, um, but it does have a gelatin surrounding to it. So we're working on it. I know, I hear you. Um, one of the reasons that I do love our Omega though is because we make Omega um, from one type of fish, it's wild Alaskan salmon, totally sustainable. When you look at fish oil companies today, I think a lot of them are using krill oil because krill is amazing scientifically, it's terrible for our environment overall. Um, or maybe they're using, you know, cod stocks or, you know, they're using anchovies, which we know are exploited. So I think that as we're looking at overall, um, you know, fish oils, we, we feel quite confident in the fact that we've only chosen to make one. And that one is a sustainable one that gives you a full complement of omegas. Um, and 17 different types of omegas are found. And we don't actually high heat process it like so many fish oils are. A lot of fish oils go through hydrogenation and other types of, you know, cleaning and bleaching the oils. We don't do that at New Chapter. We simply press the trim. No fish are actually killed to make omega. We actually use the trim which is left over from um, from processes so that you know no fish are actually killed just to make omega so we feel like we're using all parts of the fish and um, we press it and then we use the whole triglyceride oil that comes from that so that's awesome and we love it so it's sustainable 
and it has the benefits of having that natural astaxanthin content and uh, and we only make one because we feel it's best for the environment all right i take a couple more questions um let's see when should i take these vitamins with food without morning night and with water yes great question so the cool thing about our multivitamins is because they're fermented they're so gentle they can be taken on an empty stomach love that let me tell you why i love that because sometimes i forget to take my vitamins in the morning and it's 10 o'clock i haven't eaten anything for a really long time if at all i'm running on coffee or I'm, uh, I'm tracing after a kid, and um, I definitely want to take my multi because I've actually remembered to take it. What I love about it is that I can just take it right then because sometimes nutrients are really hard on the stomach um, when they're not fermented, and what happens is, is that when they're not fermented, um, your body can have trouble with like iron. Iron can be very constipating. Our iron isn't constipating because it's fermented, which we love. So the cool part is I can take my, my multis at any time of day. Do not take your multivitamin at night. Why? Because you're taking B vitamins before you go to bed. And B vitamins give you energy. And when you take B vitamins before bed, you're probably not going to sleep as well. So don't take your multivitamin before bed. What I like to do is, um, you know, one-a-days tend to be very, very popular, which is great. So you could always take a one-a-day and then supplement more C or more B later in the day if you wanted to keep your bloodstream more constant with nutrients. Definitely available there. So are the new chapter products soy free? Okay, so let me explain this. No, they're not, um, but not in the way that you would think. So there is a difference between soy and fermented soy. If you haven't looked at this, it's a really interesting topic. Soy is naturally known for being estrogenic, whereas fermented soy is actually known for hormone balancing. So the cool part is, is that when you um, take a fermented soy product, you can actually help you know, balance some of the hormonal inflammation or hormonal systems within the body. So we use fermented soy, which we feel is quite different than, than regular soy. So if you haven't taken a look at it, please do. I think you'll be amazed. Um, so cool. Um, so I see one that says, every time I take multivitamins that are all natural, I get urinary tract infections. So um, one of the things that I, I'm not exactly sure how, why would that would lead to that, um, because urinary tract infections are usually bacterial. I'm not a doctor, so let me just throw that out there, not a doctor. Um, but what I will say is, is that we do, we did just start making a women's probiotic in Canada. And what we do know is this, that the bacteria that adhere to the urinary tract walls, right, um, are less likely to adhere if you're taking a probiotic that can colonize within the vagina, okay? And the cool part is our women's probiotic uses DNA verified clinically studied strains that were able to show colonization there. Now, a lot of people immediately jump to cranberry juice when talking about it. And cranberry juice is great when you have it because again, it, it's helping to not have that bacteria adhere to the walls, but it does nothing for prevention whatsoever. That's where you really need a great probiotic and that's where our women's probiotic does a fantastic job. So check it out. I think you might really um, like that. So can I take the 55 plus if I'm not quite 55? So get ready, I'm not 55, um, and I totally take our 55 plus. Why? The astaxanthin in it. Right now, I'm doing my body all the favors by trying to give it as much antioxidant power as it can possibly stand. One, because antioxidants are great for your skin, they're great for fighting free radicals, um, but also I'm just trying to keep my immune system in tip-top shape, and I think extra astaxanthin is great. So actually I take the 55 plus and I take extra iron, um, and the reason for that is because I, I still need that. So is oil of oregano improve the intestinal flora? So oregano is fantastic overall. Um, it has a reputation. Um, for helping with intestinal health, um, as well as helping with immune health, as well as helping, um, I think it's been tested on uh, um, some, of course, antibacterial areas and antiviral areas, again, against certain types of bacteria and certain types of viruses. I don't like to make over generalizations there. But yes, um, oregano is, is great. And um, it works very synergetically with rosemary. And you can actually find both oregano and rosemary in our Zyflamin formula, which is our inflammation balancing formula. So 
can I take astaxanthin if I'm allergic to shellfish, if it's an algae? Well, the algae version is actually shellfish free, so you should probably be totally okay with that. Can we get these fermented vitamins in Canada yet? Yes, yes, yes. Healthy Planet um, is selling these fermented vitamins right now. Um, they are 25% off right now through the end of, I think through July 15th. And, um, and they're 25% off all new chapter products. So you can check us out on the Healthy Planet website or any of their stores. We are currently on sale today, um, right now. So just a heads up. Um, so can we give elderberry to kids? Yes, there are elderberry um, that are appropriate for kids. Our elderberry forest is made for ages 12 and older. It's a capsule, but you can find elderberry supplements for kids. Stay tuned. We're working on it. I promise you we're going to get there soon, but elderberry is a great option for kids. I give it to my kids, and uh, not only that, it's pretty yummy, and they actually really enjoy it. Um, so let's see. Should I take a multi and the mushroom immune support? Um, I think it's a personal choice. Um, if you can, I think that, you know, it, it, they work very well and complement together. Mushrooms do different jobs than your new micronutrients do. They, they have different phytochemical properties to them. So if you can, I think that's great. Um, I think sometimes people feel like they have to make a choice, right? So what I would say is if you have to make a choice, if you feel really good about your diet, like if you feel like your diet is like aces, man, then you know what? Yeah, I would, I would pick the mushroom supplement for supporting your immune system at this time. Um, that's what I would do. But if you feel like your nutrition is lacking or maybe that you're not you know, doing what you should be nutritionally, I would probably personally stick with, with my um, multivitamin and, um, and try and, and get some balance going on there. And that's probably gonna help benefit your immune system overall. Plus, because we have those fermented multis, you're gonna get some of the same benefits that you would get from the mushrooms. The mushrooms have a higher beta glucan content naturally um, than Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but you do get some of that content as well. So um, what should you, when should you take your multivitamin, elderberry, immune support, and probiotics? Can you take them all together? You can, um, absolutely, you can take them all together. Um, I like to sometimes space out my multivitamins. Sometimes when I hear um, new research on supplements, I get super excited, and I actually want to just keep taking them um, all at once, but then you don't know what's working for you. So what I would say is, is this, um, take one thing at a time, Take it for about two weeks at a time before you incorporate something new and really listen to your body and pay attention to your body when you're taking any new supplement so that you know it's working for you. And once you're sure that it's working for you, then you can incorporate new things in. What you don't want to start doing is taking 10 things all at once because you start taking 10 things all at once. Guess what happens? You don't know what's working for you and what's not. So um, one or two things at the same time tends to work. Like again, if you're taking a multivitamin and a fish oil or a multivitamin and a multi-herbal or a multivitamin and a mushroom supplement, those do different enough things that I think that you can, you can actually start incorporating those at the same time. But again, 10 things at once, be wary. Um, I, um, so again, pairing the probiotic with an, uh, an, a multivitamin is totally cool. I think that would be awesome. Um, would new chapter probiotics help with flatulence? Yes, um, that was one of the, the things that actually was shown in that clinical study that I showed you um, that was improved when taking um, those two strains of bacteria together. Um, and um, let's see, um, whenever you're taking or talking about mixing pharmaceuticals with a multivitamin, you might wanna check with your doctor first. Um, just a heads up, Usually, um, you know, I, I think that with multivitamins, there aren't um, a lot of contraindications with pharmaceuticals, but ever, there are tons of pharmaceuticals out there. So check with your doctor. I think that's the best advice that I could possibly give. Um, so I'll just try and do a couple more and then I'm gonna have to, to sign off. Um, how does your iron product compare to a liquid iron for absorption? Okay, so again, you know, when you take an iron in a liquid form, your body still has to utilize it. Your body still has to break it down and you still have to, um, to utilize it. 
What I love is, is that fermentation is almost a form of pre-digestion. It's a form of breaking down nutrients um, so that your body can utilize them more. So again, I think that our iron works particularly well for me because it's, it's broken down to a point where I don't have those constipation side effects that I think sometimes people suffer from with, um, with taking an iron supplement. And because I personally tend to border on anemia, um, I like to take my iron supplements consistently to really just keep my iron levels consistent. And this works really well for me. When I take an iron supplement that's a liquid, sometimes I don't like it as much because it kind of has a blood taste to it. I don't know if you've experienced that, but um, that's why I just prefer a, a tablet. So just a personal opinion, seriously. Um, so um, again, um, I've got a question about joint inflammation. So if you haven't checked out new chapter Zyflamin, please do Zyflamin, Z-Y-F-L-A-M-E-N-D, Zyflamin. Um, it's awesome. It's 10 herbs and spices that are in a combination that were shown to help with inflammation balance within the body. Um, I think it's absolutely amazing because it pairs some of the super botanicals that are out there from turmeric to ginger, and it pairs them together um, with eight other herbs, including holy basil, like we talked about today. And it is a great inflammation balancing um, herbal Zyflamin. Please check it out. I, I think you will be super impressed. So again, oh, um, I'll finish up with this last uh, question. What supplements do you take? So thank you. Awesome question. Um, I love talking about my vitamin regimen because it's super personalized for everyone, right? Everybody has specific needs. So the first thing that I cannot live without is my multivitamin. Um, and so I take the 55 plus right now because I really like that astaxanthin content, but I also have to remember the 55 plus doesn't have the iron in eat. So I actually take our fermented iron separately from the 55 plus because I still need that. Um, so that I feel really covers my nutrient basis for the day. And then I head into my herbals. So if I'm having a super stressy day, I like to take rhodiola. But if I feel like I'm kind of a light stress day or maybe, you know, I'm wound up from my day and I'm trying to wind down at the end of the night and I don't want to have a glass of wine because I try to avoid sugar where I can, um, I take holy basil to kind of help wind down, which is fantastic. If I've decided to kick up my exercise routine that week, um, which I think I've been trying to do more and more now that I've been in quarantine, um, I, um, or, you know, socially isolating, I guess is the right um, terminology for it. I take Zyflamin to help me with recovery. Uh, it's got ginger in it, fantastic for recovery. Um, and so I, if, I, if I've ran or if I'm trying to exercise really hard, I, I love my Zyflamin and incorporate that fish oil, super great for your brain health. Um, take that every day for cardiovascular health as well. I know I take a lot of stuff. And finally, um, I take the lion's mane mushroom. If you've never experienced lion's mane mushroom, let me just tell you, um, it is really incredible. It helps you stay really sharp. It just stays really sharp. And that's because it actually helps your neurons communicate with each other and it helps with neurite outgrowth. Want to hear something totally crazy? Another thing that improves neurite outgrowth to help your brain communicate with itself is astaxanthin. Yep. So the same thing that you would find in our 55 plus astaxanthin you would find um, is also a bit, it, you know, able to increase neurite outgrowth, which means your brain cells are going to communicate better with each other. So I take a probiotic as well for digestive health, but I only actually, I only take that every once in a while when I feel like my, my digestion is, is off or I need a little boost in that area. Um, but most of the time I do pretty well. So that's my regimen. Um, I vary it up according according to season and according to what my body needs. So listen to your bodies. Remember that you are your best health advocate and that you understand your body the best. Paying attention to your body, paying attention to your immune system is so important right now. Listen to yourself. If you start to feel a little something, pay attention to it and, and you know, give yourself the nutrition, the time that you need, the stress relief that you need to start your body on its road to recovery. It's been so awesome, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to Healthy Planet. Please remember new chapter supplements are 25% off. And uh, I, if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You can always reach out to us at newchapter.com. Thanks so much and have a great evening.